We are taking a look at Ambernix first Windows handheld, the Win 600. We will be unboxing it and taking a look at the features, then we will run some system and gaming benchmarks to compare the two models performance. And we will finish up with a look at mini games on both Windows and SteamOS, as well as some emulators performance. Grab two cups of tea and some bickies, it's a long video. As always we start with the unboxing. Lifting the lid reveals the Win 600, we will show it in more detail shortly. Underneath we have a user manual which is in English and Chinese. It covers the features and operation of the handheld. Next we have a screen protector and some wipes for when applying it. Inside the box we have a 45 watt USB Type-C charger. We will include the correct adapter for your country. And last but not least, we have a USB Type-C cable which is used for charging. The Win 600 comes in two colours, black and white. The AMD 3020E is only available in black and the 3050E is available in both colours. The Win 600 measures around 9.29 by 4 by 0.86 inches and weighs 490 grams. The display is a 5.94 inch IPS touchscreen with a 1280 by 720 resolution. On the front we have the D-pad and clickable analog sticks along with the usual gaming buttons. There are two additional buttons which depending on the OS you are using are the Xbox Game Bar or Steam Key. On the top left are the left and right shoulder and trigger buttons. There is a USB 3 port and a USB Type-C port. The Type-C port is used for charging and also connecting peripherals to, as well as video output to a TV or monitor with a converter. On the bottom there is a 3.5mm headphone jack. As mentioned, the Win 600 is available in two models, the AMD Athlon Silver 3020E and 3050E, with respective maximum frequencies up to 2.6 and 2.8 GHz running at 15 watts TDP. Both models feature the AMD Radeon RX Vega 3 GPU. Both also have 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM, which can be upgraded to 16 gigs. There's 128 and 256 gigs of M.2 SATA SSD, which can also be upgraded. For communications, both models have Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2 support. They come with two 4500 mAh batteries. In our tests, we got battery life of around 2 hours 16 minutes on full load and 4 hours 50 on idle with the 3020E. On the 3050E, we got 2 hours on full load and 4 hours 40 on idle. We will be comparing the two models with a series of system and gaming benchmarks to see the difference in performance on Windows. As a note, we are using a larger 1TB SSD in the 3020E model, as we needed more space to install all of the software and games for this review. It should not affect the overall performance too much. Our first benchmark is Passmark. Passmark pushes the CPU, GPU, RAM and storage to their maximum in a series of tests. The Win 600 3020E model scores 1341, and the Win 600 3050E scores 1507. We will be comparing the scores at the end of the benchmarks. PC Mark is a series of more natural tests covering day to day tasks from web browsing to image processing. The 3020E scores 2515 and the 3050E scores 2601. 3D Mark tests the CPU and GPU to see how well they work together in video processing tasks. The 3020E scores 306 and 3050E scores 308. We could run the benchmarks again and get slightly different scores, but more surprising is that they are essentially identical and there's no noticeable difference. In our first gaming benchmark, we are running Final Fantasy XIV at 720p on the maximum graphics settings. We get a final score of 1226 for the Win 600 3020E 
and 1,249 for the 3050 e The scores are on the low side, but do keep in mind this is on the maximum graphics setting. Setting this to lower would actually make the game playable. Next, we are running the Street Fighter V benchmark at 720p on the maximum graphics settings. The 3020E scores an average of just 13.1 frames per second, and the 3050E scores 13.5. As a note, dropping the quality to low will give you around 45 frames per second, which is pretty good for the handheld specification. We finished the benchmarks with Cyberpunk 2077 running at 720p on the lowest graphic settings. The Win600 3020E scores an average of 9.51 frames per second and the 3050E scores 10.2. These are the benchmark results which are more demanding. The actual in-game frames per second is higher but still not very playable. We are getting a solid 60 frames per second with the CPU and GPU changing between 25% to the mid 50s in the more busier scenes. Thanks to Tattoo Dr. Doak who suggested the game via YouTube. Let's take a look at the benchmark results and compare them together along with the more higher powered but also more expensive Ion Neo Next Pro. Comparing the two models side by side, we can see a noticeable difference in pass mark performance, but afterwards the results are very close to each other with the 3050E model slightly in front. I was quite surprised with there being from a 2% to 11% performance difference depending on the benchmark. Keep in mind that we did upgrade the 128GB SSD to a 1TB, so we could install all of the games we used in this review but this should not have been a major effect on the in-game performance. So for us at least, there is little difference in performance if you're planning to upgrade either the RAM or SSD once you get one. You can choose to have SteamOS or Windows separately, or you can dual boot between the two if you wish to. First, we will take a look at the SteamOS. It is an official build of the operating system and contains just about everything you would find on the Steam Deck. You have probably already seen millions of videos on the Steam OS, so I won't spend too much time on that. You have access to your Steam library along with the games that are known to work with Steam OS, which is handy to have. Other games will likely also work, but there may be things like having to use a keyboard to enter text for example. I have picked a few games from my Steam library, which are a mix of officially known working and unknown working games. Keep in mind that the Win600 processors are not as high specification as the One X Player or Ion Neo, so we won't be trying the very high end games on this. But there's a nice mix of older games for SteamOS and afterwards some newer games for Windows. We start off with Fallout New Vegas, which was suggested by Danky Kid on YouTube. We are playing at 720p on the medium graphic settings and are getting between 30 to 60 frames per second, depending on how busy the scene is. Lock it to 30 and the game runs great. Also suggested by Danky Kid is Bioshock Remastered. We are playing at 720p on the lowest graphic settings. Depending on how busy the scene is, we are also getting between 30 to 60 FPS. You can limit the frames to 30 and play this game just fine. Next, we have Borderlands 2, which was suggested by Retro Resolve on Twitter. We are playing at 720p on the lowest settings and are getting around 30 frames per second, which is not ideal. But the game is playable if you set the in-game frame limiter to 22 to 62 FPS, which smooths it out for the most part. Portal 2 is a popular game on Steam, so we thought to check that out. We are playing at 720p on the lowest graphic settings and are getting around the 60 FPS area. You could leave it at that or increase the graphics levels and limit the FPS to 30 if needed. We finish off our brief look at SteamOS with Sonic Racing Transformed at 720p on the normal graphics quality. We are getting in the 30 frames per second area, which is fairly playable.
For Windows, we will be trying a mix of older and newer games on the 3050E model. And after that, we will be trying a number of emulators to see how it performs. We start off with Hades, which was suggested by Retro Resolve on Twitter. We are running at 720p on the default low graphics settings and are getting a good 60 frames per second. You can tweak one or two settings to increase the graphics a little if you wanted to. Next we have Power Wash Simulator which was suggested by Phil Graham on Facebook. We are running at 720p on the low graphics settings and getting between the late 30s to 60fps depending on what's happening. You can lock this to 30fps and play the game fine. We are playing Lumens Remastered at 720p and pretty much have a solid 60 frames per second. We have no issues here with the game at all. Thanks to Robert Spandafer on Facebook for the game suggestion. Also suggested by Robert was Art of Rally. We are playing at 720p with all of the settings on the lowest. We are getting around 50 frames per second area, which is not bad as this game is quite demanding despite its appearance. And one more suggestion by Robert is Pac-Man Museum Plus. We are running this at 720p at the default graphics settings and are getting a solid 60 frames per second. It's a very basic game so you shouldn't have any issues. We had a number of people suggest trying the Xbox Cloud service and we are happy to see it runs perfectly. We are playing Forza Horizon 5 and there's no issues at all. The Wi-Fi access point is around 10 meters away and there were no graphics artifacts or lag. Next we will try a bunch of emulators to see how well the 3050E model performs. You will have no problems with 8 and 16 bit era systems, so we will skip to the more recent or more demanding systems to see where the handheld's limit is. We kick off with Sonic Adventure 2 running on Flycast on Retroarch. We are getting a solid 60 FPS, but I did notice on other games that there was minor frame drops. This might be a retro arch issue, so running the dedicated app will likely have better results than via retro arch. We tried a bunch of PlayStation games on Swan Station via retro arch and had no issues at all. Everything works great. Next, we are trying the Dolphin emulator and Burnout 2. We are not quite getting a solid 60 FPS on Burnout 2, but it is very playable. We tried a few other games and had stable frame rates, whilst others did drop a bit. And onto the other system it emulates, and Last Story, which is running very well. We did also try some other games and had less success with lower frame rates, but there are some playable games. Thanks to Herbert Halls for the game suggestion. We tried a bunch of games on the dual screen emulator Desmumi and they all run great. You can have it run in dual or larger single screen and there's no issues at all. The 3D dual screen emulator Citra does not run as great as its predecessor with slower performance on most games we tried. With some tweaks you can improve the performance, but I don't think you will get to full speed on popular games. As standard, we are trying God of War on the PSP emulator PPSSPP. We are getting mostly 60 frames per second, with very minor dips every so often. If it can run this game, then you should not have any issues with others. We thought we would try the PlayStation 2 emulator PC SX2 with Gran Turismo and got fairly good results. There was some slowdown at the start of the race, but as it got less busy, the frame rate rose up to 60 FPS. We got mixed success on other games, but there are definitely some playable ones. 
and our well does the OG Xbox run. Well, you can play the fairly basic mashed at OK frame rates, but don't expect many games to run as well. But it's quite impressive that some games are at least playable. We do have to keep in mind that the Win 600 is a far lower specification handheld than its competitors. It is also around half the price which is well worth making a note of. Because of this I come into doing this review with the expectations that it will play older games well enough but anything that requires high performance hardware will not work. And for the most part this is true. For example Cyberpunk 2077 is barely playable. If you are expecting to play these kind of games then the Win 600 is not for you. As I explored my Steam library, which is mainly older generation games as I now use Xbox Game Pass, I remembered many gaming gems that I played years ago, and with the Steam Cloud saving it meant I could often continue playing where I left off. It was a nice trip down memory lane and a great opportunity to finish some of my many uncompleted games. I would say that's what the Win 600 market is aimed at. It's gamers with a library of older games, or even those simply buying old games on Steam for a few pounds, especially during the Steam sales. There's thousands of games to explore, or you could go down the Windows route and have access to good old games, Epic Store and so on. For emulation, the Win 600 is fairly good for a processor of this specification. It can handle all of the 8 and 16 bit systems very well, although as you go up to the more recent systems the performance does drop. The Dreamcast and PlayStation work great, then by PlayStation 2 we see less than ideal performance. It's a decent showing but not far different from some Android handhelds which is something to think about. If you enjoy older games or even newer generation ones that are not highly demanding, the Ambernic Win 600 could be a good option for you. It is around half the price of a higher performance device which is tempting. If however you want to have access to more recent games and emulators then I would suggest the higher end Ioneo, GPD or One X Player handhelds. You can learn more and buy the Ambernic Win 600 on our stores at droix.co.uk and droix.net or browse our wide range of Windows gaming handouts. That wraps up this Win 600 review video, we hope you have enjoyed it. If you would like to see more games played on the Win 600 let us know in the comments. Subscribe if you have not already, it helps grow the channel and you won't miss out on future videos. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you again.